<laughs> See, it turned into a went from a fart to, to a little tune. I was like, I was like, I was starting it out with a fart sound effect. Like then I changed it. Yeah, but, but it was like a it was like a dubstep rise. Like, like, fuck yeah, guys! Welcome to Super Mega Cast episode, episode one ninety three. Ninety three, man. I said it before you. I know you did, and I, I, <sighs> sorry, not sorry. Let's restart the podcast. Nope. I told you I wanted to say the number this time, and it's really shitty that you would do that. Well, I'm getting sick of this, man. I quit at episode COVID? 200. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm getting sick of you. Oh, shit, I try dude. to say the episode. The episode number has always been my thing. Super Mega finally breaks <gasps> up. Uh, yeah, man, but welcome, everybody. It's uh, I'm Matt Watson. And I'm Ryan McGee. Because some people still, 193 episodes in, say they can't tell the difference between our voices. I feel like we have a very similar tone of voice. Yeah, we do. Like, it would be, I don't know, it would be the same. Imagine if you don't know how to speak English and you heard these two voices talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the thing is, uh, I, I always wondered, like, how do people not tell our voices apart? And then recently I went on a podcast called Pod About List and it's three hosts and I know, like, I know all of them separately, but when I mm -hmm. listen, I only know one of the guy's voices. The Who rest, the host? I, uh, this guy named Caleb, uh, L. Caleb Was on the Twitter. the podcast you went on? Yeah, the podcast okay. just went on. And I can't, I know Caleb's voice, but the other two, like, I just can't, when I listen, I, I'm not very good at telling them apart. And I'm like, I know them, but I can't tell their voices apart when I listen to it. Do I want, well, we also have to have different, we, we speak differently. I'm more nasally. Much like, much like Obama. Has a different cadence than a, I don't know who this is, but it's Brent. Brent. <laughs> I, think Brent. That, I think at the end of the day, our, our voices are different, but not different enough where people's brains can make different. a huge distinct But same. Exactly, right? Exactly. Wait Beautiful. a second. For some reason, my calves hurt a lot today. Your like calves they're really massive. Like they're really sore today. Dude, they look, it, your calves are so pronounced compared to your lower leg that your calves <laughs> almost look like implants put into <laughs> your legs because there's, how have you always had such great calves? Because you don't even work your legs out, but your I, calves are fucking like, I want to know if where it's, are mine? Where are mine? Look at mine. Do you, can you even see mine? Mm -hmm. Compare them to yours. I feel like my calves are like this because I masturbate so much. And you know, you're straining. Oh, that's got to be it. You're, I'm like, Argh! are you a leg stretcher? Oh, yeah. I, I've had this conversation. This is a very untalked about topic between men. But there's two groups of guys. There's guys that jerk off and guys that jerk off and have to stretch their legs really hard to jerk off. Like you got to like, like, well, I don't have to. I'm just like, like if I if I want to if I want to get to the conclusion fast, conclusion fast. Why is that? I don't uh Blood. Cause that's like a real thing that like, know. like everyone I talk to, you know, when I meet up a new business client, uh, first thing I bring up is I'm like, so when you masturbate, do you, <laughs> do you flex your leg muscles? Does it help you reach uh, orgasm Climax? faster? Yeah. Uh, that, why is that though? It, scientists in the comments, uh, Wikipedia scientists, let's go ahead and, uh, let's see that. Also guys, you can go ahead and stop trying to edit the Wikipedia page for G score by Ryan star because they yeah. locked that one. Oh, did they lock it? They locked it. They had to lock it. Because people decided, like, this is a war now. And some Wikipedia moderator was like, I don't it have is time a war. for this shit. You bought that Star Fan Yeah, Square, I know, man. I know. I, I did buy that Star <laughs> Fan Square. And uh, I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm real fucking pissed off. Yeah. There was a point where it was on Wikipedia for a while as Ryan McGee. It was nice. It was. I have a screenshot of it. It's on our Twitter if you want to go check that out. Um, but... No, it's right back to just being FUYUA and G Scorpi. And by the way, I have not received my goddamn certificate yet. Still. Because it's a scam. I paid a hundred dollars <laughs> for the certificate. I paid it was it's supposed to be framed, comes to my address. No. Matt. At this point, I'll give you a have fuck. a check mark for a reason. Why don't you why don't you use it for a change? Blast them on Twitter. I'll do it right now. You know what? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna finally do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my Twitter to blast a corporation. I remember one time I blasted Ruby Tuesdays because <laughs> I because my dad and I were going out uh, to have like I think I can't remember if it was a Father's Day or a birthday of something. It was something special, and my dad wanted to go to Ruby Tuesdays. And you know I, I can do Ruby Tuesdays. I can I can eat at that salad bar all day. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but we got there and we like. Waited for about 10 minutes, drinks or nobody came, and we, then we, like, flag someone down, We're like, hey, can we get, a uh, drinks, uh, and whatever, and they're like, oh, yeah, let me go get someone, no one came again, we flagged someone down again, we're like, hey, no one's come gotten us, it, it's been, like, quite a bit of time, it feels like, probably around 20, 25 minutes or so, 
And then uh, they're like, oh, yes, yeah, so, so sorry. We'll be right there. What do you want? And they took the, our drink orders down and then never came back again. And so my dad and I just left and went to Chili's. And might I say, Chili's is way better than Ruby Tuesdays. You know, uh, sorry. You know who worked at Ruby Tuesday? No. Bill. Did he? Kill Bill the Rapper, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. He worked now. at Ruby Tuesdays for years. So how you been? All right. Yeah. How's that Freddie Dread music video coming along? It's finally coming out. We okay. Had to, we had to wait for RCA to, we filmed it like, Wait, are you are you starting to beef with RCA? No, 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 no. We had to wait for the labels in the world. No, not at all. It it just the process takes a long time because you know because because uh, I remember you were telling me earlier of how how RCA were just no, little no no, no 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 I was no not at all I was, I didn't say anything like that. The thing is, uh, it's a long process to get samples cleared because uh, I you know me you said and they're weak minded fools who don't understand business. <laughs> I don't think I said that. He, he didn't. I don't think I said you, that. Yeah, there's, there's a part of you I know that's legitimately like. <laughs> it's a little part of me that's like, oh no, the, the wrong person from RCA hears this. <laughs> no, because I've been having to do phone calls at RCA. And uh, because basically a long time. So I, if, if some of you guys know, I have that other thing, Lazy Eye, where I do music videos with the Tucker Bros. And I we did one for Freddie Dread, And then we have another one we shot on like a red dragon and we rented a warehouse and police cars and shit, and it's a good video, but we haven't been able to release it because Freddie, when he makes music, only like uses samples for his beats. Mm. And RCA's like, okay, well, whenever you make a song, you know, we have to go through the whole process. Like, you can't just release it. We have to go through the process of contacting the person that made the original sample and getting it cleared and, you know, like clearing that sample. So like when artists sample something, like, you know, if you have a record deal, you have to actually get permission i mean you have to get permission regardless but mm -hmm. like so it took like half a year is there is there ever is there like a thing in the music industry about people using samples versus producing their own stuff or whatever or does no, it matter i don't think so i don't think people see sampling as like a uh because like there's sometimes where i'll hear like a sample or whatever and i'm like oh it's linked to this song and then someone else is like no it's this song and i'm like oh shit it's used on like many different a songs. lot of samples are used in many songs like yeah. you can actually there's a but website can you lay claim you. to a sample no the only person that can own a sample so is the could, person that made so it. So someone could make a, like a, technically a, like a Freddie Dread song, right? Or whatever. Use like the same beat. Yeah. So like, you mean like you, someone else can make a beat using the same sample? And yeah. You, yeah. As long as they got permission from the person that owns the sample. So like, wait, if I, if I took one of the samples that Freddie used and just like kind of started the song with it, would people at first think that I was Freddie and then I can go in and just kind of be like, just kidding. What's up? What's up, bitches? Freddie's right his back. They'll be like, God, he <laughs> fell off. Do the exact same sample. <laughs> copy the beat. Like, yeah, I'm sure you probably could. You'd have, you'd probably have RCA barking at you. But, uh, the, the thing is, it's uh, worth the, it's worth the laugh. We finally had to ditch a sample because the whole problem was just in the intro of Freddie's popular TikTok song, GTG, uh, was the intro sample. And we ditched it and had Frank Jab C recreate it, uh, do like a brand new one, which I like a lot more. So when you fuck bitches, the vagina gets stitches because uh, yeah. I spread it out the yeah, ass yeah. with my big dick. Uh, Freddie gonna get some head. Freddie gonna give some head. Freddie play video games. Freddie masturbate. Freddie sleep. Freddie wake up. Freddie have Rice Krispies. Freddy, <laughs> this is daily his daily routine. That that is so like not far off from Freddy Dread's daily routine. I'm telling you right now, as as someone who has witnessed his daily routine from the time he wakes up to the time he goes to bed, absolutely that is that is his daily routine. Didn't you tell me that like you're like Ryan? You thought I was unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. Freddy is another story. That fucking, like like Freddy would wake up at, like 2 p.m. Like, why? Well, I, I mean, you and I do the same thing. We woke up at four today. Yeah. But, you know, we'll wake up late. The difference is I don't go to the fridge and crack a beer before I drink some coffee. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do that, but on most days, no. And then uh, Freddie Freddy, Freddy is, an, is an unhealthy, I love him. He's an unhealthy little boy, and I, I want his health to be a priority to himself. And uh, if it's not, we're going to have to get uh, Queer Eye guys out to Toronto to go uh, to Freddie Dredd's luxury apartment where he has five arcade machines in his living room have i ever told you i have this like weird like this weird kind of thing i don't know what what it is but whenever i watch the show or whenever it's kind of like popularized i get kind of nervous because i'm because in my head i'm like i know i'm the type of person for someone to like be like hey can you fix this dude up he dresses like shit <laughs> he's dirty he needs to learn how to cook himself some meals like i always get nervous i'm like 
are the gays going to show up at my house? The gays are here. <laughs> oh, sorry. The fab five. I uh, I wish they were just called the gays. The gay five. <laughs> the gay five. <laughs> Dude, it's really funny you bring that up because last time I was watching Queer Eye, I just remember I was like, ah, oh, man, what if we like, what, 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 what if we got Ryan on this? Like, what if we legitimately <laughs> called them on Ryan? Like, would they do it? I'm sure they would. I don't know. Are you, are They're you, doing Brooklyn next, right? That's their next are thing. Are you ever mate. nervous? Huh? Do you ever have you ever been legitimately nervous that like someone's gonna secretly call the gay five on you? Yeah, but gonna, the thing is the they would co- they would contact me. They don't just show up as a surprise like they do or like whatever. They set it up and everything, of course, with the producers. But like I've always been like, I am the prime candidate. You really for this are. Show. You really are because you because what I see is I see a man. It's a blank canvas with a lot of potential for. Cooties. But I but I look at their shit and like every episode I'm like, what they're saying is getting through to these people, and I'm just like, what? I I don't get how they get through to people because I guess maybe my self confidence is lower than anybody that's been on the show before. I doubt that. But but like they seem they do seem to fix not fix them, but they're like. They take them out to go get clothes and like, see, don't you think you look good? And the people are like, yeah, I do look good. But I don't think they could do that for me. I think I'd still see my tits and my stomach and I'd be I like. I think a lot of people just need. No, uh, I, don't, I don't like this. Can I get my black t-shirts back? A lot of people need affirmation. I think a lot of people just need a little kick in the pants with some affirmation. I get affirmation. I have good friends like you and Justin. Well, then maybe you're the type of person where affirmation doesn't have to come from outside. It has to come from within. Yeah. Which is hard. That's the hardest type of affirmation. I see the comments are like, how come Ryan doesn't believe that he's attractive or that he's not fat and all this shit? And I'm like, well, if one, one, because you're fans and it's hard to like, I mean, not to say that I don't trust the fans, but the thing is. It, it is hard, like, believing, like, not, not, it's not like, oh, viewers are liars, but it's like when you have a lot of people. I guess uh, looking up and like admiring. I guess yeah. it's it's harder to. It seems to like take that at face value. Yeah, you know, but uh, just because it's like you, it in a way it becomes numb. You become numb to it. But I weighed myself this morning. Uh, I think I, you know, I'm 194. Ooh, you lost six pounds since last time I checked. Really? Was yeah, I 200, 200 last time? Yeah. Okay. Or right below 200. I said like yeah, I was right below 200. Fuck yeah, dude! Congrats. The, the thing is, I've been stuck at 194 for. Let me see. You know how sometimes you hit a plateau when you're losing weight? Or I guess you wouldn't know. Well, you're only, you know, you're only like about 50 pounds more than me now. Really? Mm-hmm. Think think of it in that way. But I still have so much extra fucking fat and shit, dude. Uh, you think you Well, do. you're also taller. Yeah, I, I definitely. What do you, no, I don't think it. Like when I can physically grab it, I can hold it. This isn't just like a body dysmorphia look, issue. I can do the same no, thing. No, you with can my do the same. Th- but you're like, but look at this. This is. Legitimately excess. Look at this jiggle. All right, you're turning me on a little bit with that. Stop. Look stop. This it. Shit. Stop. Stop. Can, stop. You're I turning can, me on, I dude. Can press my titties. You're gonna make you want to put my dick between I those create, tits. My, I can create cleavage. I have, dude. Dude, I can create mid cleavage with the mid fat I have. Don't come to me telling me I don't. I, I, I think I don't know what I look like. I, I, I think I have a clear view of what I look like, and I think it's. I think it's disgusting. You're always gonna have a little bit, a little bit of something to grab, because even I, even myself at 140 pounds, I got I, my I, tiger stripes on my side. Yeah, get some coconut oil. Will they go away? Yeah, if you you, you got they look pretty massages. purple and pretty deep. Because you can I'm get rid of those fat, fat. You can, you can get rid of stretch marks. You got to okay. use ti- I, uh, coconut oil. And yeah, shit. I, I I know I'm not morbidly obese, but to me. Whenever I look in the mirror, I it's always the same the same shape. It's just pear. You're your I just own worst critic, a, dude. I see a pear. I hate when I look in the mirror when I like, especially when I have my shirt off. Like when I'm or get, a TP. Like whenever no, I wear shirts, I feel like I I have TP or a pear. When I get into the shower, or I a look pear in the mirror. wearing a TP costume. Okay, yeah, a pear dressed as That's a sack of joy. Yeah. yeah. When I get into the shower and I look in the mirror and I have my shirt off, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I get I get horribly self conscious because I don't have any pectoral muscles. And I'm skinny. I can see my ribs, and uh, I just yeah. But that looks kind of like that looks kind of like the base, right? That that's like you. I think there's a difference between like yes, you can have pecs, but I'd rather have no pecs than tits like I have now. They're not tits, dude. Dude, you can you can get a good Ryan. I've known people that have tits before, dude. I I promise you, I have more to grab than some women that watch our show. The problem is, you just uh. Only the only people you see in real life 
are incredibly skinny, tall men. You well, <laughs> so also like, well, like think about like all of my all of my friends that I talk to on a regular. All basis. your friends are skinny, you, tall dudes. Uh, Jackson, Harrison, Carson, Carson. Justin. Justin's a jo- Justin's a lot like uh, me in terms of like how skinny he is. Yeah, Justin might even be skinnier than me. I don't know. I think Justin might be a little skinnier than me. I've been gaining weight during quarantine, but it's from alcohol. But he's also shorter. Yeah, he's a short king. Just kidding. He's a tall king. Justin Justin stands above them all. <laughs> he won't listen to this. No, he won't. We can say anything we want about Justin on the podcast because he won't listen to the podcast because he doesn't edit the podcast. Exactly. We can we can discuss whatever we want. We can we can. But like, when 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 you go out for the day, let let, let me put it this way, Matt. It's so bad. That even when coming to the office to see my friend, I will go through five different shirts and look in the mirror or like see how it feels just because like I I like I like the like I wear big black shirts because I don't like the feeling of it tightening and then seeing this shit. So like even I remember even back in high school, I would I would put on like five different shirts to be like, am I comfortable in this? No, I don't. Like I look and I I don't know. I do that sometimes. It's always been a fucking thing. But I feel like when you do it, it's specifically like to see if your clothes match. Mine is to see if my body looks good in my clothes. Oh, I do the same. No, it it, it is like sometimes I'll put on a shirt and I'll be like, I don't like the way that feels on me. It like look fits me today. I don't like that. Um, Dude, I just want to like once you feel more. You don't even have to feel more confident. Let's go and get, like I want to. I want to take you clothes shopping, bro. It's the problem though. Like if I get those shirts that like are appropriate size and it hugs me a little bit, it's, get, I'm gonna feel self conscious because I can just feel that constantly. Or like when I sit down, then I can see it more. Well, why do you gotta get clothes that are like tight? Hmm? Baggies in. It's 2020. Baggies. Baggies in. You can get baggy clothes, dude. I love to get baggy. Baggy clothes, clothes are super. I've started wearing large T-shirts. This is not. This is a. This is a medium. <laughs> But I've started wearing ones that are like, I started wearing large and extra large t-shirts because I can tuck them in and it's nice and baggy on me. I'm only 20 pounds away. No, I'm- uh, What's your goal? My goal is 175. Okay, so you're really close. 20 pounds away. Less than 20 pounds. But part of me is wondering if I need to lose like more weight than that because this is a lot of jiggle. No, dude, just don't don't even think about that. You think all of this is just 20 pounds? Easily. Don't, Don't even think about it that way. Don't think about like- Oh, I need to lose more. Just goal by goal. Set it. Set it goal by goal. You know. And dude, I'll do this. Be I'll like, look in the mirror. My goal is one seventy five, and that's that's what my goal is. You can see what I'd be with a tight stomach. Let me I'd see. Like, I'd lift that up. Dude, you like, you also like, but you do have the body type though, where you could just get so jacked. You could be so. You could you could do it now. Like yeah. you could kick my ass now. But if you, if you got like you you I have, just have the a, body type, to just be one of those like incredibly ripped. Built dudes that I have just kill me. Natural mass. I have natural heavy upper build. Not yeah. in terms of I'm not like oh I'm heavy muscular, but I'm a very husky. Dude, you look like build. Thanos if you got ripped. Ooh, you'd like, like Josh Brolin. Yeah, you look like Josh Brolin. Do you think I could pull off uh, that Ryan Reynolds look? Maybe yes. the Hugh Jackman look. Yeah, dude. Oh I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd love for one. You'd day be a day. huge jacked man. I wouldn't ever want to be jacked like that, but I would like to to be able to go out in public. And look through, like, look at the shop windows and see my reflection and not want to, like, fucking look away and be like, damn, okay, I look good today. Because I know, ne- like, I always feel like I look it. good when I, the, the only mirror is, like, the rear view mirror. I'll look up and I'll be like, I'm wearing sunglasses and my hair looks decent today. But anything below that, I'm like, yo. I said this probably 200 times on the podcast that I... I don't get how you don't like your hair because I'm so jealous of it. I, I like my, I I like my hair. to but, have your hair. But it's a... Uh, how I, I, I think it's a little too poofy because remember whenever I would wear it down, like I, I think I honestly, I, when I look at myself, when I had long hair and whenever I had it down, I think it looks bad. Have you seen Max? I think old hair? it looked bad. Max looks great with long hair. You guys like, have the same his, type of hair. You guys have the same type of thick hair. Yeah. But he also has a different head shape and a different like fate, like his yeah, face. Yeah, but you have a great different. head shape for fucking doing, you can do My anything My head shape is hair. like a panther, planter's peanut. No, it's not. <laughs> what? It's like this, I don't know what it is. You're, it's you like a, a bean. You have it's a like very a pinto symmetrical bean. head, like a very nicely shaped head. I have a weird ass shaped head. You see from the side, it's like chin that kind of is like weird. And then I got this like, it's big up top and then but i always felt like you have like a very nice unique look not in like a oh not in an i'm trying to call you ugly in a oh, nice thank way you. That, that's but very like sweet. but like you 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 stand out oh thank you and, but i feel like i in a crowd 
can be lost quite. But easy I think I'm just another kind of about themselves. Well, I'm another white dude with a beard, you know. Ryan, you're Middle Eastern. <laughs> yeah. Come on, don't. You're Middle Eastern and Asian. Asian. Apparently, you yeah. know, I'm somewhat Asian. Mm -hmm. So if if anyone wants to, you know, call us out for being racist towards Middle Easterners, Asians. Well, your mom is also from Africa. Or, or Africa. Technically. Yeah, but that's that's geographical. That has nothing to do still, with it. Still, your roots are in Africa. <laughs> so, I don't see... Uh, well, Northern problem. Africa is the Middle East, essentially. Still Africa? <laughs> okay. Technically, okay. geographically, yeah. Yeah. So, that's all I got to say, She man. was born in Africa. She was born in Northern Africa. Weren't we all born in Africa? No. I was born uh, in Columbia, South Carolina. No, Ryan, weren't we all... <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. ...born in Africa. Humanity uh, comes from Africa. Yes. We originate in Africa. Yeah. I am an African. Asians are, oddly enough, given the funny haha -ha stereotypes of each given race or whatever, but Asians are what? Aren't they like cl closer to uh, Africans than I other think, races are I, or something I, like that? I remember reading something that like, uh, I think like in terms of evolutionary like charts, I think uh, Asian people are close more closely related to african people than like for instance white people yeah. and stuff which i guess that makes sense geographically because africa's closer to asia than you know north america is or something could you imagine what or i don't know we see humans and there's all different types of humans just like there are all different types of dogs but the difference being like i'm wondering if if there was a alien species that started the kind of once we kind of became humans out of the the evolu during the evolutionary track cuz you know there is that noticeably point. different enough from like yeah. primates and like monkeys but like if if there was a superior alien race and they started kind of in, like breeding us with different shit like what what would that look like cuz you know how dogs there's pugs and great danes and all that shit oh, what is that yeah. with humans or is that simply just like mixed race people? well you know what's funny what's funny is i guess technically like it doesn't exist on earth but i guess technically there could be other uh races of humans that don't exist mm -hmm. today but like if the earth had developed differently in different like i guess technically there could be different races in an alternate universe that could exist that wouldn't be black white asian anything like that like it would be something completely different and, and look completely different from anything we have today and we're getting to the abusive side of the argument but like we made so many different looking types of dogs like if we could we could we have done that with deers like could there be short miniature fat ass deer i guess technically yeah i guess any species if if you were to domesticate it or just breed and it enough breed could, them yeah. with the uh the unfortunates of its of its uh uh, herd. Yeah. yeah. I guess technically. So, because, like, you know, like cats and dogs, for instance, you know, they all share a common ancestor. But now if you look at them today, there's so many. There's all, there's like definitely different types of cats. But when you look at the realm of like the spectrum of different types of dogs versus cats, you know, cats generally all look the same. You know, they still, you know, some will have like the, they have the, what is it called? The pouty. What's the pouty cat looking face called? Well, you're thinking of a domesticated cats think about like outside of that like lions True. tigers yeah. ocelots stuff like that lions tigers and bears oh my <clears throat> but no well, what are we our foxes are in the canine family mm -hmm. are they in their own little isn't thing? that weird they're not they're in their own thing i think really yeah I, let me double check that i because i always thought foxes were like i was like oh foxes are they come across dogs, as like a like canine. canines but uh did you know ryan that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35 oh no that's a decade away for me the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some hair left. Yeah. That's why there's keeps. Matt, if I'm correct, you used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription, right? Yes. Now, thanks to keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your home, Matt. They make it easy and deliver your medication every three months so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there on the market. You may have tried them before, but never for this price. Prevention is key. Keeps treatments can take up to four to six months or more to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and nearly 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. Keeps treatments start at just $10 a month. Plus, for a limited time, you can get your first month free. 
Ryan's stepdad lost all of his hair in a horrible accident, and he was unable to grow it back until he tried keeps. Now that hair is solid on his head, it's beautiful, and he's able to cheat on his wife with several different women because they find him so attractive. Exactly. Once a cheater, always a cheater. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash super mega to receive your first month of treatment for free. What is that, Ryan? That's keeps as in K-E-E-P-S dot com slash super mega. Keeps.com slash super mega. Matt, say it one more time just in case it didn't stick. Super mega. Thank you. Matt? Yeah. Okay, if you're still using one of the big wireless uh, providers this year, keep in the uh, two. Have you? Uh, I I am lost already. Hold on, <laughs> <laughs> Matt. I'll ask it again. Okay. Yeah. If you if you're still using one of the big wireless providers this year, have you asked yourself what you're paying for? Between expensive retail stores, inflated prices, and hidden fees, you're being taken advantage of because they know you'll pay. Oh. Enter Mint Mobile, Matthew. Oh. Mint Mobile provides the same premium network coverage you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost because everything is online. Yes! Mint Mobile saves on retail locations and overhead, then passes those savings directly to you. Yes! <laughs> Matt, I- I'm, about to, I'm about to telepathically send you some Mint Mobile facts. Are you ready? <laughs> Thanks, dude. Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Whoa. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. And with Mint Mobile, stop paying for unlimited data you'll never use. Choose between plans with 3, 8, or 12 gigabytes of 4G LTE data. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So ditch your old wireless bill and start saving money with Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, free! go to mintmobile.com slash supermega. That's mintmobile.com slash Super mega. mega. Fox. Coy- coyotes are canines. Yeah, coyotes. Coyotes, coyotes pretty much are canines. Are Wolves are canines. There's wild dogs. There's wild hogs. Oh, fuck yeah. You don't want to mess with them. <laughs> uh, Dude, growing up in South Carolina, like people would always be like, hey, be careful about going around the woods. You don't want to run into a wild boar. And whenever I went to the woods, I was super afraid of running into a wild boar. You'd hear them sometimes. Okay, never mind. Foxes are related to dogs. Okay. They're, they're they're part of the Canada family. But, but, dude, have you ever seen a wild boar? Like, in the woods? No. Oh, it's, it's, it would scare me. It's it's. Aren't cool. they mean? I don't know. I mean, they're, they're wild animals, so I guess, no. I guess all wild animals can be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. I, I've seen like. them. I've seen them before. I've seen them, uh, I've seen them when kayaking in... My dad took me kayaking in some really rural part of, I hate that word, rural, 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 rural part of South Carolina, uh, very far away from like any main towns. And, and we were going through the woods and there was a little island and on the coast were a bunch of wild boars. Just, they're just like brown See, wild the, pigs with big Lake horns. Murray, they have an island like that, except it's for goats. Yeah, and they were just, they were all going <laughs> and running around. When, uh, see, I've heard them before. Like, I've, like, in the woods, like, I've heard the, <laughs> like, out in the distance or, the, like, the, you know, the squeal that's really loud. But I've yeah. never heard, uh, I've never seen them in the wild. It's crazy how, like, I guess where we grew up, like, I guess wild pigs technically just, not pigs, but close enough, ran aren't they, around. Aren't they known to gore people? I don't know. I don't. They can get huge. They can get massive. But are they dangerous? Like they like they'll gore people. I'd imagine because they have, have horns and also they're a wild animal and wild tusks. animals are gonna yeah they have tusks and wild animals are gonna you know like because they, they corner like they're, that they're, they're and they react. just and it gets in here. Ugh. Yeah, I mean same with bulls and shit. Like yeah. those those people that they'll do like you. the the bull marathons like running from the bull and then get like all mauled, it takes is like, the bullhorn to go. Yeah, it's dead. Like, what do you Fuck expect? That. I'm not doing that shit. What do you, what do you expect? Like, file the horns down. I don't understand. My 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 favorite tradition is when they um when they have a big funny flag and wear a big funny hat and then slowly kill a bull by poking holes in it while it's in the most stress of its life. <laughs> it's just it's, it's like why am I in this much stress? Yeah, they like. Of course, it's gonna fucking charge at people and attack it. <laughs> well, don't they give it like it. a bunch of like testosterone shit too, or they like fuck with it before to get it angry? To. I think they rile it up though. They. You know, the fuck with it. I, 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 it. I hate bullfighting. Like, bullfighting and shit like that. It's just cruel. I'm all down for bull riding. Bull riding, hell yeah. But bull, bullfighting, it's like, let's, this, you know, this animal that's uh, just a, a regular innocent animal, let's fucking abuse it and, and piss it off and then kill it. It's <laughs> also not our culture, so it's not important to us. So That's true. To, uh, to us, it's cultur- culturally not important. So, you know. It's just, it, it's just bizarre to me. 
poor, poor the running of the bull. Running the bull. I wouldn't want to do that because I'd be more afraid of being trampled by a, by a crowd than being trampled by the one bull behind the crowd. I have this weird part of me that would love to do running to the bull. Like I've always kind of. I don't this, trust people. I trust. I, I trust, trust that bull either. more than I trust people. I feel like it'd be very exhilarating to do that, but also I've seen uh, there's a subreddit called R slash the bull wins, and it's uh, exactly what you think it is, and. It's after seeing enough. It's vi- it, I, I can't watch those sometimes. I'm like, oh fuck! Okay, I don't want to. I never want to fuck with a bull. There was one where the horn like went into like the guy's like yep. chin, and it like kind of drug him a little bit. I think it did that kill him. I think a lot of people die from. Bulls. I don't know, but there's an injury like that in a hot. Have you seen? We watched Hot Fuzz, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the, the, the dude end, with the spike. Yeah, uh, on the model of the church. I remember speaking of like wild animals where we grew up. I remember uh, bobcats. Uh, have the most terrifying sounding like cries and I was camping with my my old man and I was in the tent and it was the middle of the night and middle of nowhere in South Carolina my dad wakes me and he's like Matt, Matt, listen and probably about 20 feet from our tent is a bobcat that's doing like a cry to another one and it's like <laughs> and it's just this horrifying sound bobcats are horrifying and well, one, also coyotes are scary i think any wild animal doing its wild animal noises can can sound freaky it can sound like like a baby being thrown off a roof it can sound like honestly this one time i thought someone was being abused around the area that i was like uh listening to but it turned out i think it was just like a cat or something oh cats cats if cats when cats are in it sounded ter- like a woman's scream no in cats cats when they're having territory fights will make sounds that I'm like you don't even know like a cat could make listen this is a bobcat scream in the woods middle of the night I'm trying to sleep oh you recorded it no 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 it's on YouTube oh wait wait that's like a sonar like like a that's dude, horrifying dude isn't that fucking terrifying dude if I was if I imagine uh, imagine the sun going down like it's almost dark and you're kind of just walking in the woods and all of a sudden you just hear that and you're like about a mile away from like base camp or whatever. This. Yeah, so like that. So I'm in, the, I think about this. I'm I'm young, I'm like 10 and I'm in the woods in the middle of the night away from civilization. You hear that echoing through the woods? Terrifying. Yeah. I remember just laying there, scared my mind and there were two of them on opposite sides of the tent. So and they were doing it back and forth. So it's like the tent was like surrounded by that. It was terrifying. And my dad was like, damn son, this is cool. And I was like, no, it's not. This is fucking- <laughs> I'm not having a good time. How do I know that's not a fucking cryptid that's going to come rip into the tent and pull my legs off? Man, being a kid was cool because like the, the existence of creatures, like when I hear that sound, it's- it's scary for a different reason because I can link it to a predator that I should 100% be afraid of. But when I was a kid, my mind would go and be like, that could be a creature. That could be a monster. I miss I miss being able to believe in ghosts and monsters and shit as a kid because there's that there's that type of fear about that specific thing that's so unique that I, you can't get back because, it's a fear because you unknown. mature out of it yeah. or some people still believe in ghosts or I whatever I don't think I matured out of that I still if I heard that I'd still like there'd be a part of me that's like that's no what I'm saying is it's for a different reason like if you no, heard, I like if I heard it if I heard that sound in the woods today there's still a part of me that would think it's like not an animal well now you know what the sound is right yeah but I would still my my brain would get freaked out and I'd be like <laughs> Like I've read enough creepy shit on the internet. Like, what if what if this is that? Yeah, I just like at the end of the like, it's the same reason why there's some th- like videos on the internet where it's like top ten creepiest ghost videos on the internet. Like they're eerie, but the same way a horror movie is creepy. Like it's creepy imagery, but I don't find it. I I, I don't look at that and like I don't have trouble sleeping because I don't believe in like demons or ghosts or anything like that. Yeah, I feel that. I I I've believed in that shit. <clears throat> Like, I couldn't help it growing up. That shit just scared me. So then when I would be- When I was in religion, I believed in demons and all that shit. 100%. Because my mom and dad would tell me they're like, real. <laughs> like energy, positive and negative, right? Yeah, yeah, no. And my mom and dad would tell me that demons are real because they're strong Christians. So then, it, like, you know, if you have your parents telling you, like, yeah, demons are real. It's like, oh, shit. It's like, yeah, demons are real. There's Fuck. There's demon in them. Demons. But, yeah, uh, fucking scary, man. Do you believe in ghosts? I don't not believe in ghosts, but I okay. don't firmly believe in ghosts. Like, I, I feel like I think that it is possible just as like an ant can't comprehend humans. I feel like, you know, we an ant in its own right thinks it's the most advanced, like, 
to, to an ant or an animal, like each creature, I guess, thinks it's like the high, uh, like the most advanced species. I don't think animals think like, oh, this species in terms of consciousness above me. Yeah, but and using I, that arg, like using that argument, right? Like, uh, I mean, then ghosts wouldn't exist because what we comprehend as a ghost isn't at all what a ghost is, right? No, I'm not. Yeah, I think that I think that there could definitely be something. Uh, higher than humans that exists on a plane that we are unable to understand because yeah. just like an ant can't understand our thoughts or our, our but stuff. Ter- like- I'm talking in terms of evil spirits and like a woman dressed up as a maid floating in the hallway. Oh yeah. Like that shit. I, I, I don't know. I don't think, I think if there are higher, uh, if they, if there are higher beings, they're not dressed up as maids hovering yeah, around. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't basement. believe that. I think I think they have totally, better stuff to do. I think it's possible that there could be uh, higher forms of consciousness, like beyond humanity, that will never that we can't comprehend, just because there's different dimensions. And then you know, it's like we are not like we're we're supercomputers, we're super smart, but like in terms of the universe, there I'm sure there's plenty of things that we can't comprehend because our brains don't function at well, that our, level. Our brains a lot more. Uh, powerful than we give it credit for because i i'd link all of like the ghost shit to just someone's brain just kind of misfiring or basically like your brain you will you as a human will try to fill in gaps right yeah like in back in religion there's the argument of you know the god of the gaps where um in everything you don't understand you place god and in everything we do understand there's science and that's that was an art that was a it might still be a decent argument uh, on the religious versus like the non-religious side um but i feel that if there were such thing as ghosts or spirits it's not in the sense of uh, some yeah that it would it would just be maybe not even a being because when we're talking about like there being something else outside of us i really don't think even this is kind of in a way a weird way of saying it, but there's no way we could even comprehend the, yeah. like not just the complexity, but the way, it, the way, the existence. Yeah. Because to us, it would be like, Oh, I wonder what those beings are thinking. It's like, well, we think of thinking as thinking, but they don't like, you, you know, you, you can't fucking, because it's literally to, beyond human comprehension. Because what I think is, uh, the idea of ghosts and spirits, I, I think is like the easiest way for, uh, the human brain to comprehend like something beyond us. But I think that if, and it, I think it's very plausible something beyond us exists on a different plane. And I'm not saying God, I'm not saying ghosts, but I think that it's possible that there is something else farther than humans on a different plane. And if if I think that we we can't even begin to imagine it, right? Like our brains mm-hmm. don't even function that way. Yeah. And I, I think that it's totally possible, but we just we won't know because it's like an it's like a snail trying to comprehend humanity. And at, and at some point, it's like. Uh you know, what's the, what's the point in going after, you know, understanding that yeah. because there is no use in understanding something that's un, uh, non-understandable. I think that's the point. I think that that's why people think that though, and because I think it's, uh, the unknown is so something like that is so fascinating and, and, uh, curiosity, um, fueled, mm-hmm. you know, you, you want answers. Like everyone wants the biggest questions in humanity or, or questions that are never actually able to be answered like is god ex- does god exist what's the purpose of us being here it's like mm-hmm. those are questions that like no matter what you do no matter what you know you're able to discover you can never f- prove or fully understand you only come to what you personally find the meaning of right you can yeah. you can say like oh i know the meaning of life that's the meaning of life to you the actual meaning of life no one will ever know does god exist well, it's not that no one will ever know it there is no meaning yet and and I guess I well I think I honestly there's think not a purpose there's not like a reason we weren't like you know you know like you 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 build a chair for a purpose yeah we're not here for a purpose well I think that it's it's up to a, we create our own purpose I think yeah I think everyone creates their own purpose and meaning of life and I honestly I feel like uh, to give life meaning like that for life to have a meaning the meaning of life is whatever you make out of it yeah you know so the meaning of life it varies person to person. And there's no, I don't think there's any right answer unless it's, it's, it's the way remember, I keep bringing this up. It's the way I look at people, right? Every person are, is their own fucking universe. Yeah. Unless we are actually in a simulation, <laughs> then there's a meaning to life. We were created in some kind of thing, but we won't, we'll never know that. There's so. the possibility we're in a, uh, a simulation, but at the end of the day, it's like 
you know, there's so much real emotion and con- connection here. It's like, is it really worth it to try to go down that rabbit hole and get all paranoid when you will never like you're never like, do you think you're really going to be the, per- you know, are you, are you going to be Jim Carrey in the Truman show? Are you going to be the one that figures out that they're in some sort of uh, TV show? And also, I think it's just that linked in of not narcissism, but because that's a negative. But there's you know how people always kind of they they have this. I am greater. There's something greater than this. Yeah. There's a purpose to this. You know, all that. Um, I feel like that gets a lot of people stuck in thinking that, you know, they were in the simulation and I got, I got to figure it out and all this stuff. And it's, I don't, if, if we are in a situ, if we are in a simulation, it doesn't take away anything from what we are experiencing. Yeah. You know what, what is I mean? the, I understand there's the desire to have questions answered. Like that's just a desire that everyone has. You want questions answered. I think that's more of a curiosity, right? Yeah, like, yeah. But if you do discover that we're in a simulation, like if we were to somehow discover that, it's like honestly, what difference does it make? Because we're all helpless at the end of the day. We we are all. It's not like we can escape the simulation. If we do live in a simulation, this is it for us. Yeah. And honestly, in a weird way, like I think in that sense, ignorance is bliss because mm-hmm. it's like I'd rather just keep living my life. Ha- uh, happy in the situation I am than have my eyes open to this reality where I'm going to live the rest of my life paranoid and nothing matters. For me, it's interesting because like I'm not more paranoid by the fact. I'm more just kind of uh, like I, I'm, I'm never paranoid like, oh, oh my God, are we in a simulation? It's fun to just ponder. It's like yeah, the, it's pro- fun. the probability. Like what is the probability we're in a simulation? If you look at like people like Elon Musk or others that talk about the subject, there's that whole argument, right? We've talked about it before where um, one day humans will get to the point where we create a virtual reality experience that is almost real life. Like you can't dif- differentiate it really, right? Yeah. We will get to that point just because technology and all that other shit. But who's to say we're the first ones that have done that and this isn't just that? but done to the nth degree. Type what if of we're thing. a simulation inside of us? That, that's what I'm saying. It's like, what's <laughs> the argument is, what is the possibility that, that out of all of the universe and out of everything that we are the first like ones to do this, uh, kind of like we're the first simulation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's freaky, man. That's so crazy. That we created the about. first simulation and that we're already not in a simulation of a simulation of a simulation, you know, all that other shit. Because it's we all create simulations. Ju- and that you know? simulation will eventually become, you know, advanced enough to, to think it's real. To think it's real. Because and in our build lifetime, its own simulation. In our VR lifetime, I think we'll be able to create computers that will be able to create a simulation where things inside of it can fully believe that they're real. Yeah. And that's so crazy. This is, it sounds like we're on acid right now. This is, it's just fun thinking. No, about. it's, it's great thinking. And, um, I'm, I, not, I'm not like conspiracy theory. No, we're in a simulation. I think it's just fun like, to talk what about. if, you know, what are, what, are, what, is, what are the chances? And I, it's things like this, I think. It's why people <laughs> like things like uh, psychedelics, because yeah. I think psychedelics make you just think about different things that you normally wouldn't think about. Like, it doesn't make you like a fucking hippie, but I think that. When, they, when, when, when people say it expands your mind, it doesn't make you. It doesn't make you a, a better th- – I don't think like it makes you like a better person or a better thinker or anything like that. I think what it does is it opens you up to just kind of like f- think about even stupid shit. Like give credence to stuff and go down rabbit holes. Yeah, like you kind of like you're – I guess we've never talked about psychedelics on our podcast. Have we not? Mm-mm. I thought we've Believe mentioned that we've done it before. No, I we, we haven't. Oh, okay. I think in a Let's well, Play we mentioned it briefly okay. a long time ago, but like uh, – Woo! Ryan, if you like sex, do you, you mean, like sex? Uh, you mean pounding my big old to a into a fat, hairy Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Then you'll love Blue Chew. BlueChew.com offers men a performance enhancement for the bedroom. At BlueChew.com, you can get the first chewables with the active ingredients, sildenafil or tadalafil, which are the same active ingredients as in Viagra and Seattle. Hoo-hoo, erections. Yeah, baby. <laughs> uh, BlueChew.com affiliated physicians work with you to find the dosage and active ingredient that is best for you. Chewables can work faster. The chewables from Blue Chew can be taken on a full or empty stomach. The consultation is online and free. Cheaper than going to the doctor, and it's cheaper than Viagra and Cialis. And it only takes a few minutes to connect with a BlueChew.com affiliated physician, and if you qualify, you get prescribed online quickly. No in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. It ships directly to your door with discreet packaging. So, you know, the 
the homies don't know that your dick don't work. And that's the thing. There ain't nothing wrong if you if your dick don't work. Sometimes you hit performance anxiety. We've all been there. Sometimes, sometimes you need a pep talk. Well, sometimes your dick needs a pep talk in the form of blue chew. Yeah, you know, Mother's Day just passed, and my mom called me in tears because you know my father was not able to perfor- perform. Especially he, after the divorce, that's even a bigger disappointment. I know. So he had a lot of performance anxiety, uh, and I said, Dad, you got to check out Blue Chew, and he used uh, our promo code Super. And next thing you know, my dad had a rock hard erection, was able to pleasure my mom. Did it fix the marriage? It did. It fi- they're back together now. Oh my god. Yeah. So here's a great deal for you guys. Visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code SUPER. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B L U E CHU.com, promo code SUPER. Yeah. SUPER. I think I think what's cool about psychedelics is it, it it's a short period of time where like your brain would normally compute in A to B to C, but then all of a sudden now you do it's like A to N to X mm-hmm. to B to C. It's like I guess that's a good way to describe it. Is is you just think differently for a short period of time, and you're able to understand and comprehend things that you normally, I guess your your sober normal brain wouldn't be able to really like. Not in the highway where yeah, you're not like it's not like oh so where you're high. coming up with funny ideas. I mean you are, but it's it's more of so you're th- like for instance. Um, when when you're anxious, you can become tunnel vision. Yeah, if, and you if can't you're on a psych- side of it, if you're on a psychedelic, um, there there was a moment if you remember. I think uh, one of my friends came to visit, and I di- dropped acid. Yeah, and uh, I came to several just kind of conclusions. And I, afterwards, you even commented, you were like, "Ah, oh, you said something that really clicked." And you you even stated that like I kind of wasn't affected as much by uh who what I was having a problem with. Yeah, because because that came- day, that day I, I hadn't, I had never tried psychedelics at that point and mm-hmm. Ryan did it uh, with a friend and I babysat and I remember that day you were talking to me about a bunch of anxieties that I knew you had had in the past and you were just like coming to these conclusions about them all on your own that I remember just hearing fully sober and I was like, dude, that makes so much sense and then the thing that I like about it is whenever I do, uh, for instance, uh, acid, afterwards the realizations that i have while i'm on acid while i'm tripping like the the kind of uh points i'm able to come to the conclusions that i'm able to come to stay with me afterwards so when i come back to quote unquote reality Mm -hmm. i'm like oh okay so i kind of went through this journey in my head about this problem i'm having or just this basic concept of life i've never really thought about and now moving forward I, i have this new idea of this or this new grasp on a certain concept, uh, like a really basic concept uh, that I normally wouldn't have ever even thought about if I hadn't tried a psychedelic. I've, I've kind of stayed away from psychedelics recently just because uh, I there, it's going to sound weird. I It's like I don't want to face certain things. Oh, yeah. I, that's the I thing mean? about psychedelics is like because I know when I'm on when you're on a psychedelic, you I've never had a ho- bad trip. I haven't either. But I, because what I, because within a trip for me, there are bad aspects sometimes. Like if you go into an environment, it can get sometimes creepy and it can start to feel overwhelming and weird. And just kind of like bring a weird sensation to you that you can't explain, but it's like, oh, but the moment you go in, in it's weird because the moment you go into another room, you and I have explained it uh, when we were talking about it goes in kind of like the next. Uh, season chapter. yeah next next right? episode <laughs> season one feels different than season two or like one room feels differently than the other because i remember going into a room with all the windows shut then going outside then coming back where the windows were open and each room whether it's the walls and everything felt different it's like visiting a new web page yeah and i'm not i'm not trying to say everyone go do ask no no yeah like i don't want to say it these are our, these are, are our experiences we're not we, we, in no way are we can uh condoning like the use of illegal drugs we're talking about our experiences though i've never done shrooms i've done uh i've done lsd see i'd stay for me i i, I started i the first psychedelic i did was shrooms. most people do and i think i would always go the shroom route i've just never had shrooms and I, I, i'm i'm too nervous about acid after doing a lot more research and stuff i yeah. kind of don't want to have those, I don't want to chance those side effects because even you have had some side effects. I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about it. No, I mean, um, you and I have, uh, we've done acid together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we I, haven't in a, over a year. It's been a, about two years. Two years. It's been yeah. about, uh, two years actually this month. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it was like May 28th. Cause last, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, tattletale on people that don't want to be talked about, but we did it with certain people. I think that was April of two years ago. Aaron. 
It wasn't no, Aaron. I'm no, no, I'm not saying I don't we, think Aaron would ever do that. I don't think we, no, we didn't do it with other people. We had other people babysit, but I don't know if they want to be included. In yeah, yeah, no. Um, I'm not, I'm not scared talking about stuff like acid because um, like there are drugs that are really, really bad for you, like heroin and cocaine and stuff. But I, I feel like stuff like acid is, can definitely be bad for you. I think you need to, if you are going to ever do a psychedelic drug, do your research. Don't just have a friend that has it and be like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Like, do your yeah. do your research. That's, and that's what it. I did the first two times. Yeah. I did. But one same. friend I did trust. The other, the first friend, okay, the reason I did psychedelics the first time, it was right after Daniel passed away. Yeah. And there was just a friend that offered shrooms. And I was like, fuck it, why not? And honestly, it's gonna sound weird. It was very therapeutic. That's why I it like was psychedelics. So therapeutic. It's like therapy. I love psychedelics because it's they are therapeutic. Every time I've done it, I have never had a bad experience. And every time I've done it, I have been able to have some massive epiphany about something in my life where then when I come back to reality, I'm like, wow, I feel you, so much better. You know those moments, right? And maybe it's only because I'm from a small town that I get this way, but you know, like when you see mountains, like remember when you saw mountains for the first time when you were a kid that like kind of like butterfly feeling that awe or like when you see just uh, something so fantastic, like a maybe a something you don't see all the time. You see a whale breach the ocean or you see these magnificent things. Imagine that feeling intensified and it continues to go on. It's this, I feel like psychedelics, there's this constant undertone of wonder that I feel throughout the experience. Because it, it, I don't want to sound like a hippie, but in a way it does expand <laughs> your mind and, and it expands your mind in the sense of, oh, whoa, it expands your mind. Yeah. But it does in the sense of like, people say that because in terms of, like you are your own universe. You experience everything you experience is what you, you is know, from your see. perspective yeah. and everyone else it has expands a different your perspective, perspective and you see things differently during that. So in a way it does, that's why people say like, Oh, your third eye is opened or mm -hmm. something because it's like all of a sudden you're seeing more about reality than you did. You see all these new colors and new feelings and new thoughts. And, uh, if, if anyone is going to try a psychedelic test it, like there's kits you can get online to test it because psychedelics, can believe it or not really fuck up your brain if this isn't like go try them and then test it this is if you are going to do it if 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 we can't like if there's no and no, if no one's going to talk you out of it it's like teaching at abstinence. least test it yeah because it's like teaching abstinence because you know parents and people they try to teach abstinence but the reality is they're never going to be able to stop young people from having sex mm -hmm. so that's why it's smarter to instead teach how to have safe sex and be safe about it than tell people not to have sex it's like we can tell people don't go try psychedelic drugs, but at the same time, it's like you can't stop people from doing that. So it's better, if people are going to do it anyway, tell them how to do it safely. Yeah. Do your research, don't do it from a stranger, don't do Babysit. it. Babysit, I honestly think babysitters are important. Yeah, first the first few times at least, like you need <laughs> mm -hmm. someone to watch over you because your brain's in a different state. And you need someone that's thinking. Someone you correctly. can trust. Yeah. You, we don't, I don't know how to explain it. Do you, it in a comfortable environment. You wanna be, most important thing is you wanna be comfortable because Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. And, and the friend can't use that trip to their benefit of entertainment or else if it's your first trip, that could give you a bad trip because they'll be fucking with you. And if someone's fucking with you and you're on acid, it can make there's I, I don't, name, I, don't, I, I, don't I don't want to name who name a certain there's name. there's one name of someone who kept doing something. And we specifically were like, stop. They were making faces. at us. We were like, night. seriously, like, stop, stop. Stop. That's freaking me out. Like weird faces. Oh, dude. The last time, which was two years ago, I guess the last time I was, uh on acid the the one of the I, I experienced the scariest and most kind of like neck it just gave me the shivers it's just i just got really close to a mirror and just stared at it. oh my god dude it's like uh you know in the simpsons movie when crusty's like like now we have hd cameras and you see the up close of his face yeah. and it's like disgusting hyper realistic if you when you're on psychedelics and you look in the mirror, it's it it's terrifying. It's well, like, whoa. Your brain does do things and also it helps with um that that it's on acid, where basically my thought process was I just looked at myself and I made it so my periphery was kind of like blocked. So I was just looking at myself and I was like, This is how people see me. When people are talking to me, I this guess. is what they see. And you know, when you're just looking at a mirror, that's very obvious. But like it was it was kind of like a holy shit. But then uh, the, the weird part was that my reflection started to do this. I'll do it to Matt. Yeah. Everything moves like, a little bit. Like, like, ah! my, like my head was starting to tilt down and I was starting to like give this evil smile and I'm like looking at my reflection. I'm like what? Like it was weird. Yeah. No, it, I, it messes with your brain. That's the thing is like, it, they're not to be taken lightly. Like psychedelics literally fuck up your brain 
for a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, so like, don't mess around with them if you don't feel like you're not ready because you need to be in a good mental place and you need to like, don't do it because of peer pressure. Know what you're doing. Don't. Yeah. It's not the type of that's thing. How, that, that's how you have a bad trip. Yeah. And also, uh, I I think I think something that has been different for me ever since I tried psychedelics was what they call like ego death where it's the first time in your life you fully uh, understand like what you are mm -hmm. in a way where like your ego fully, it's the first time like you're able to like break free from your ego. That's and, very like, humble of you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's a real thing that's been like studied. It's called ego death where it's like on psychedelics, you're able to break free from your ego and like actually be like, oh shit. Like kind of well, experience that. Well, that's, that. well, part of that we were talking you're about. You're always different after We were that. talking about problem solving it's the a lot of the problems that you have your ego can get in the way like whether it's kind of your your unwillingness to back down on on something that someone else wants to go forward with or whatever um you you, you break you kind of the ego death thing is true because you start to look at it very just kind of matter of fact when you're on psychedelics yeah I feel. you're able and, to kind of separate yourself from a you br you go you think about yourself differently. I guess is the best way, but you just you're different. Uh, I think the biggest I think one of the biggest takeaways I've had from my experience with psychedelics is like, I think that it ultimately made me more of a nihilist, but in the sense of like, I would describe it as like positive nihilism, not like oh nothing matters, but it's more like, kind of realize that like I guess things don't really matter that much, or they don't matter as much as my whole life I thought they do. But that's okay. They matter to you, but they not matter the, to me. But not in the grand scheme. But but, but they only like there's no master plan grand yeah. scheme type. And and understanding that's made me realize like I guess things don't really, of course things matter. But it's like I guess ultimately things don't really matter. But that has made me a happier person because I'm like I can just kind of relax and not be so worried because things don't matter. It's not yeah. like oh nothing matters Ooh, like that type. It's it's more of like a positive form of nihilism. Yeah, like you know? I've I've never had like a depressive nihil like whenever not like i think in a nihilistic way it's never because of whether it's my depression or anxiety or something. yeah I have it's never just been kind of like a general nihilism. layout of how i th see things it's just kind of like oh this is how things are things as we were talking about in the beginning and this is something important that's a very it's a very basic idea that i think a lot of people need to start thinking about it's just that you you know things just don't matter things don't just exist and they all of a sudden matter because they're because god says that uh uh you're this this lovely person matters to you now and he's like okay if you didn't exist nothing would exist because you would not exist to comprehend it so it yeah. doesn't exist just just remember that it's you subjective. are the one that gives credence to the positivity and negativity in your life and um, if you are, um, uh, if, if, if you are blocked off by s some mental health issues, there are ways like therapy and certain medications that you can look into to You're smoking a lot of weed. It. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't, I feel like nihil nihilism, cause I, we say this nihilism as a, as a, as a view is good and everything and but it's not helpful right because there does need to be you things do need to matter for for society so i think nihilism on. can lead to apathy yeah and th that's where it's and that's like, where then it's just like if that feels very depressed mm -hmm. and I, I i think that there's a really cool form of nihilism that's based around like nihilism can be still. therapeutic because yeah. you can go oh, okay this isn't as big as i'm making it out to be you know you can kind of talk yourself down using nihilism yeah yeah but, yeah yeah, yeah. But you can also kind of that nihilism can build and it can lead you to just just kind of I don't know. Usually there's a you can tell when s someone's gone too far with it, when they complain about kind of like every medium or every game sucks or every movie sucks now or like everything sucks now. Everything's bad. Everything. I cannot stand people. You know, have the world view which everything sucks. It's like I'm, I don't want to hear you. Complain I'm the only all the one time. that notices everything's bad. I don't want to hear someone complain all the time. It, it's exhausting for people that complain all the time. Other people around you find it exhausting. That is a common thing. But it is exhausting when you're in a group because you and I have been in this, and, yes. and we're and we're we're still in this to some degree, you know, because you just have those friends and you get in those conversations, where it's it's addictive. You you it when, is addictive when, when you talk negativity with people like gossip. There is, 
I don't want to say there's a dopamine rush, but there is something going on. I feel it like makes you feel better, brain. and it brings you all together because yeah. you're all able to come against, come come together against huh, something. We're, we're better than this thing. Yes, you know, and I think that everybody does that to a degree. But I think it's important at some point in your life to realize the ratio of of that in your life, and it does. The more that you are in that, the more that you will feel. Uh, more general negativity in your life, and I think because nothing pleases you. That. Yeah, exactly. Because you you kind of just grind yourself down. Um, so I guess like the last thing I'll say about psychedelics is I w- I will reiterate we are not pushing for people to use them. We're not condoning them. We're we just saying explaining our experience. Yep. And if, if you we, are going if to you're use going them. to be safe, do a lot of research. Make sure like if you're on medications, that's not going to fuck with anything. You know, make sure like. Uh, you get things tested, like just be safe. Or, you know, the safe thing is if you're getting anxious, you're like, oh, what if my medication, then just don't do it. Don't like, don't go through with it. Yeah. You have your whole life to, to do stuff. Don't, yeah. don't rush things. Don't worry about things and only do something that you feel comfortable with. Mm-hmm. If you're too nervous, don't do it. Don't force yourself. To just, do it. just like if you're, you're you can be nervous about trying weed for the first time. Like I remember the first time I, I got, I, I've, t- I can't remember if I talked about it on the podcast, but uh, Daniel created the best first weed experience for me. And I'm so glad I had that experience because basically he just like called one of his friends up and his dad was okay with smoking. He kind of lived the, this guy kind of lived out in the woods almost. And they set up a bonfire and we just all just smoked weed around this bonfire, looking up at the night sky. And then all of a sudden one of my friends took me to McDonald's and we brought it back and we were Beautiful. eating McDonald's around a bonfire, looking up at the stars high. Beautiful. It was a great first experience. And I could not imagine that experience if like I was nervous at a party alone and someone was like, here, try this. And I got high. You know what I mean? I'd yes. freak out. It's it's important that you are in it. The most important thing, and you can read this online for yourself. It's all environment. You well, have a comfortable environment. environment. You have a comfortable environment, and you feel comfortable. Otherwise, because because things like psychedelics take out your feeling and then uh, amplify it. So if you're not feeling comfortable, it's going to make it worse. You know, yeah. if you're feeling really scared and sad, it's going to make it even worse. Uh, so, but the thing, don't it's play weird. with it's, them. It's it's weird because. Ah, on, when, when you are sad, yes, you do become more sad. But at least when I was on psychedelics, you there there's this undertone of beauty with the sadness because you're realizing like certain yes. things of why you're yes. sad. And, like, and also you do lessons. your dopamine you, levels are you're, increased you're fu- because yeah, you're it is a drug. Yeah. You know, it's like you actually your <laughs> serotonin stuff is elevated. So you do feel good. But <laughs> So, yeah, 100%. But it's just um, – just be careful if you are going to. If you're nervous about doing it, maybe now's not the right time or there is no good time for you and you should just stay away from it. Um, I think there, that we There should. are negative side effects. Yes, that there exist. are. Oh, and I'll give examples. I personally, uh, I've, I've, done, I've done acid a, my fair share and uh, I do to this day have some degrees of, of uh, visual impairment that I don't think will ever go like away. Like film grain? Like film grain. When I look up at the sky, I see kind of like film grain. And I, I know other people in the YouTube sphere that have done acid and have the same thing uh, where certain textures I look at kind of feel like they might start to move or I might see colors sometimes that aren't really there. Mm-hmm. And it makes me feel like I'm going crazy. But then I, I've done research and I've talked to my psychiatrist about it. It's, it, it is a you do run the risk of when you do psychedelics of permanently leaving an impact on your brain that after the fact uh, will remain such as certain visual effects uh, and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it, it's not something to take lightly. Like you think it about it is an stuff illegal before. substance. It's, a, it's illegal. First of all, <laughs> I think that I think that I am all in favor of pushing towards decriminalization of psychedelics because I think for therapeutic purposes. So is Joe Rogan. Yeah. Look at me and Joe Rogan are one of the same. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Love, you know, there's one thing that loves I am DMT. honestly, t- I'm too scared to do DMT. I don't know about DMT. I though. hear people talking about DMT and things they see like. There's this man in a hat that stands in the corner of the room and just it's 10 feet tall. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, what? I don't know if I want that. I don't want that. I'll, I'll go up into the sky and I meet God. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to. It's like, it sounds cool. It's fun, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, that's scary. Uh, yeah, what, no. if a, what if I see like a, like this monster start to crawl on the walls and I'm like, <gasps> like, I feel like I got to run away. But people always are explaining. It's not like that. It's not because you're not because you're thinking with a sober mind. That's the thing. Like we we're talking about earlier with comprehending higher beings. We can't. Think about what being on DMT is like, because when you were on something like DMT, DMT, you were not 
thinking in the same state you are now. So we can think all we want of what it would be like, but it would when you do it, it's not going Even to be Even down like to that. alcohol, right? If you yeah. have someone who's never had a drink in their life, they can they can look at people that are drunk and they can kind of guess what it's like, but it's a different thing you don't know to it unless feel yeah. and actually be impaired by that by exactly. that drug. Um I feel like this whole podcast has been just psychedelics. A, it's a big part. It, it got it got hippie, some hippy dippy bullshit. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm personally for pushing the decriminalization and legalization of psychedelics in moderation. I think. Yeah, I'd ha- I, for me, it's like I want to say that I'm for it. I just want to do more. Per- I, yeah, I haven't done enough personal research into like everything that. Like, yeah, 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 I've just done it because you know. I think I I've think like it. stuff like shrooms and stuff. In terms of a therapeutic use and even stuff like MDMA is, mm-hmm. is there's studies that like when used in a therapeutic process can Dude, be very successful. When you look at well, uh, Adderall, yeah, is legitimately uh, it's it's like it's not it's it's not heroin, it's not cocaine, it's not meth, but it's almost it, it, meth. <laughs> if it if it if it wasn't Adderall, it would be one of those things. You know what I mean? Like if it was on the streets as something, it would be that. Yes, yes. Like it would be a hard drug that people were doing because it. Is. Yeah, exactly. But people, but b- because it's so useful, it's it's allowed to be legal. Mm-hmm. You know, and people make a lot of money off of it, which is the big reason I think it's legal. Yeah, because uh, a lot of places Adderall is illegal, but you know, Adderall kind of makes people into like superhumans, depending on your. Well, body. it's illegal, and as you you told me this, it's illegal in like pro sports league. Of course, you can't use it in athletic because it's like a steroid e-sports. for your brain and focus. Yeah, yeah, and and it's very addictive, and it's. It's not good for your body at all, but it's legal because, you know, it makes people ADHD, ADHD, and also uh, money. Adderall makes so much money for corporate, like big pharmaceuticals. What would be, what would it be like for someone who has severe OCD to take Adderall? I don't think it would. I don't think it would really like. Would it have? Would it make them focus on their? Ticks more it could I guess I don't know I've had something that you like I can't answer that's I don't just know a fun enough. question I posed I just was throwing it out there for you I have to ask a psychiatrist that one or you could just pretend to be a psychiatrist right well now. Ryan I think it might make people uh might make you uh focus uh, a lot harder on your uh, obsessions and then you might have a freak out nice. that's actually why people with severe anxiety and OCD things stimulants like caffeine are recommended to like you're to stay away from because that stuff intensifies your um feelings you know like caffeine uh when i had really bad anxiety back in high school if i drank caffeine it would be worse because i'd get a lot more anxious because it's like everything's heightened yeah you know including your anxiety but oh guess what what i'm ending the podcast what?